welcome to another edition of Staying In. This time around, two massive characters in the Northern Ireland team over the past 10 years or so, and they certainly don't need any introduction. Hey, and Josh, good to see you, boy. And Josh, you're in, are you in the kitchen there, are you? I'm in the kitchen, yeah. Mrs. is just uh, making some lunch for me and the kids. Just finished their schoolwork, so that was an event. And then chilling out, mate. Did they teach you ma- No, they, ta- they taught me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will give you a little feeling of what retirement's going to be like at the end of your career. How do you think you're going to well, find that? I'm not as fortunate as G. I'll probably have to work again, so I'll be out doing some. The golf courses are closed as well. <laughs> To be fair, your your back garden's like the back nine at Augusta, so you can kick yourself out. I know. Keep doing them 5k laps. So, um, during lockdown, Gareth McCauley is doing the beep test. How regularly are you doing this? Me? I I do it four times times a week and a 5k once with the Wima. Hold on. Whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're doing the beat test four times a week on 5K. He's I'm a liar, like, Snod. He's a liar. What? You're a liar. Last time I seen you, you said, fit the same for me no more. You're doing the bleep test every day. <laughs> That's bleep test as a fitness. It's supposed to keep the wee man moving, mate. Keep him in fit. Mate, that's a bleep test every day. I don't do it on level 12. I stop at level 12. I don't go the whole way. Oh, that, that means you just stop when, the, when it finishes. You just run out the tape. <laughs> <laughs> level, te- level 12 done. You know, just stop when it stops. The, hospi- the hospitals are at capacity. I'm not going to try and go to level 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? Here, check out Josh's headphones. Woohoo! I know. I feel like snodding on a Saturday night in this front room. Bop, 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 bop. That's it, mate. You can get a gig here anytime after <laughs> lockdown. So, Josh, whenever whenever you came into that Northern Ireland team and Gareth and all was there, how much of a father figure was he to you when you came into the squad? My first trip was under Nigel Worthington. Um, um, sort of, me and G sort of became friends, but like sort of by like default. So I was I was a YT at the time. So like I was I was only earning apprentice money, and you know what it's like as soon as you go away to a foreign country you land you get that text from o2 telling you how much it's going to cost you so it was like <laughs> south america was like 12 quid a minute and 15 quid like per gigabyte and i was like i said i can't afford, i can't even afford 30 seconds here so i was like well let me latch on to the richest person on the in the in the who's in the squad <laughs> so he was there so i was like look gee look you don't mind look the situation is i'm i'm no i'm no pop-up can I borrow your phone? He's like, I no bother, no bother. Um, so I, he must have forgot how much I was using his phone because we were away for 10 days. He went to South America and then America. And then just on that trip, we just kept bonding, kept bonding. I was like, I'm just going to keep rinsing him here, see how far he goes until he tells me no. And then we got back and he texted me and he was like, you have no idea how much you've cost me on that trip. And I was like, how much is it? And then he sent me through how much it was. And I was like, gee, I can't afford to pay you back, mate. He's like, no, well, you'll just, you'll just have to earn it back making teas. Just make teas. <laughs> make teas. And then since then, we've, we've been speaking near enough every day. Um, first of all, it started just the squads. Like, we would talk. And then as the squads would come up, we'd text each other. And it would be like, well, when are you in? Stuff like that. If we can meet before the squads announced, we'll do that. And then it went from sort of being pals to where I would confide in him a lot, especially when my missus told me she was having kids, because I was 19 at the time. And I was like, flip me. I was like, my God, I'm speaking to G, and then I would confide in him a lot. And he sort of became like my big brother. And then it got to the stage where we were so close, he would critique me. So, when I'm working, like, I, I'm working, I'm working. Exactly, yeah, and he's always been like that. So he used to <laughs> ask me, like, when, when we were down at breakfast, he was like, what are you eating? I was like, I'm having pancakes and bacon, not good enough. Not good enough. <laughs> and then, going, what, why are you not going to training early? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you've got to get down and get prepared. You're coming with me, let's go. And then dinner, what are you eating at dinner? Too much bread, too many carbs, don't need that. And I was like, why is he? He said, mate, he said, I'm 34. And I'm pro- I could probably outlast you on a football pitch. And it's it sort of got to that. Like, and he's always kept me um, on the straight and narrow. I talk to him about anything and everything now, no matter what. He's the first person I go to. Um, before my wife, but don't, don't tell her that. Um, 
And he's, he's just always been on my, not on my case, but he's, I think he's just had an interest um, since, since we've been pals. And my missus always says to me, she's like, you know, your, your career's actually got quite good since you've known G. Like, can you speak to him every day? So now I like, I've, to me, he's family, do you know what I mean? Him and his missus and kids, um, they're family to me. They wouldn't, there's nothing probably I would never do. It sounds, it, um, it sounds so to good. me, Gareth, that you've got all the credentials of being a damn fine manager. He hasn't got the patience. Uh, I I need a good I need a good cop as well. With us, um, he couldn't cope. I, I don't know. Like coaching and management is something I have thought about quite a lot. Um, you need to make a, a, a distinguished decision between the two of them. Well, you want? I don't think you you can be both. Um, Probably missed the boat a little bit with coaching because all the top coaches have been in it 20 years, 25 years. So I might have to go down the route of management and have really good coaches with you who can drive your uh, drive your sessions and take a lot of your your your, uh, your daily stuff and that there. But um, listen, we see how it goes after the, after this uh, virus thing, this COVID. Because I think the game's going to change a, a hell of a lot. There might be a lot less opportunities uh, to be had uh, within the game. Absolutely, yeah. Well, listen, none of us know what, what's around the corner. What, what we do know is Michael O'Neill is no longer the, the Northern Ireland manager, and I know you both were extremely close to him. What's your, your personal thoughts on it? We, we had the good times, you know, and, uh, well, we had, we, st- we obviously started off slow with, um, results and things like that but you know everyone could see that Michael was doing a lot of stuff to to change from you know how how it was in terms of you know all the stuff people doesn't see that that we would get at our clubs the video stuff the food all all the little things that make a massive difference in a way he kind of took out took away the excuses um he treated us like he treated us more like adults give us a responsibility ourselves so we kind of bought into it a lot more uh, stopped a lot of the social stuff that was probably going on in the course. For, for the <laughs> Let's see, he's, take, he's taking it. Uh, he's taking it to a level that needs now to be kept there. Needs to be sustained there. Everything needs to be um, improved again, if you like, with the with the new manager, whoever he is, and um, things not allowed to drop back. And a lot of the st- a lot of the stuff for the local game that Michael was interested in as well needs to be needs to be carried on um, and fought for from within the association to you know to promote the local game because I mean I I feel that we lose a lot of players going to England and I feel they could be developed better at, at home and uh, and then get a chance to to go away. Yeah, well, you're a testament to that, um, Josh. You know, I, I, every time I think of you and Michael, I think of the Greece game. Yeah. I, I still see you making a beeline for him. And you see that, that, that particular night, that particular night, you got, you got the opportunity. Last was, was suspended, if my memory serves yeah. me right. Yeah. You got the call up. You, you, um, you, you scored the goal. The celebration was epic. Just talk us through what was going on in your mind that day and that night. Hang on a minute. I got him a start, you know. Jesus, here we go. Please don't listen to this absolute <laughs> madman. <mama. laughs> he, uh, he nearly played his way out in training. He nearly played his way out. Such a liar. He's such a liar. He's, <laughs> such a, liar. He's a fraudster, this guy. Honestly, Michael, it'll be all right in the night. Just throw him in. Throw him in. <laughs> it was madness. Just chuck him in, see how he copes. No, because I remember the game. It was We played uh, Hungary at home. Last score last minute, but he got booked. And then the talk was all about, can we, can we do it? Can we do it? And um, who's going to play? Because it was Briggs, he was on fire. Flip me, cliche. From, at Wigan, Boise was doing well at Ross County. And then I was at Kilmarnock at the time. So it was sort of toss of the coin. So pressure was on anyway. Met up during the week and I was like, right, okay. Because Michael's on me anyway. The whole week anyway, it doesn't matter. If Davo or Johnny made a mistake, Josh, you're getting the brother. That, that's the type of <laughs> person I was, do you know what I mean? He, ne- he never took it out on them. It was just, if I made a bad pass, it was all my fault, do you know what I mean? And then you have the likes of G at the, at the time and then Wardy uh, when we were sitting around having tea and he was like, they were like, you better not mess this up for us. Like we've, we've played seven games to get us in this position and if you come in, you better not mess, 
basically mess it up. And I was like, you're supposed to be my mates. Like, you're meant to be, like, helping me through this. And they were like, no, we're not accepting it. He said, if you don't show up, you're having it. We're done after this game. So I was like, the pressure was absolutely, was nuts. So remember we'd done the training. Um, we'd done 11 v 11. And G was right. I was absolutely, I might as well be playing with sunglasses on. Um, and then it was like, oh my goodness. So then I was doing a bit of shooting after. And then I still remember it. Uh, Michael came over to me and he was just like, look, you're going to play. Um, he said, I know you're ready. He said, there's been a lot of talk about what's going to happen and everything. He said, you just don't worry about it because I trust you. And, and that's all you need to know. So just go and play how I know you, you can play. And then from that moment, I didn't really have any, really any anxiety uh, from then. And then leading into the game, because G being the ultimate professional that he was, like normally if you play in a, a night match, Pete, you, you, have, you go you go out and do set pieces and you have breakfast, go and do set pieces in the morning, come back, you have your lunch. And then from in between lunch and pre-match, you go to sleep. So I don't sleep. Like I can't, I can't, I can't even sleep at night at the best of times. So I was just on my own. So I was on my own in my room and I was thinking, and then it hit me. And I was like, if we win, we're, we're like, we're going to the Euros here. And it's like, I have to, I was like, I have to play. Laughs are suspended. I said, everyone's going to be watching this game. I said, what happens if I have a blinker or if I miss from two yards or if I fall over the ball? And then I was like, oh my goodness, what is actually happening? What's happening? So I ended up building myself up and then I got on the pitch. And then when the whistle went, so much happens that you forget about the game. And thank God it just went right. G says it came off my ear, came off my shoulder, but it definitely came off the side of my forehead. He wears, he wears, those, uh, he wears those big earphones to protect that. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Hold on, this left ear is going to make me a lot of money when I'm retired, so I've got to keep it safe. Because I remember in the who runs and hugs the manager though. I, I honestly don't know why I've done that because I Pete, see, because see you put in the game, Pete. That's that's kind of that's frowned upon. It's it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. It would be like honestly, it's just it's not socially acceptable in the world <laughs> of football to go and hug your manager. But um, because I ran past Devo. And he was like, I can't believe you ran past me. I ran past Norwood <laughs> and he was like, I can't believe I put in that ball for you and you fired me off. To be fair, the only person I would have went to was G, but he was behind me. So I was like, standing on the pitch, <laughs> seeing the bench celebrating, and I just like, just, just go for it. Just go for it. Who, who, who can say anything? And then when Devo scored the third from the corner, I was like, we're, we're, we're on that plane. I said, we're getting on that plane. And then halfway through the game, I was just... Uh, when balls were going out from the throw-ins, I was like thinking, I was like, my God, tonight's going to be absolutely mental. We're going to not sleep. We're not going to sleep. Incredible. If you go back, Gareth, the, the easiest game for you to turn around and say you would love to play a game is a Ukraine game at the Euros. But if you take that out of the equation and you could play one game a game for Northern Ireland, which one would it have been? Slovenia at home. No, no. At the... Uh... That game basically sealed, got me, got me in the mood for West Brom from, uh, fr from that game. Um, Roy Hodgson had been uh, watching it, West Brom were interested, and that, that sealed, that sealed their, their approval uh, on, on me going there. So that was probably one of the most important ones. And it's also a, a thing where I keep saying to people on that there about international football and how you perform on that stage is, is massively important because it uh, it can convince people that you can play at that at that higher level and a lot of people just need a chance to prove that. Just in terms of the next manager and Josh probably unfair for me to ask you this, so I'm not going to. Gareth, what does the next manager have to have to continue on with what Michael's uh, left the foundations over there? Um, I, he needs to be like fully devoted to it. Um, there's a, there's a couple of boys that I, I feel tick the box in, in Baraclough and, and Robbo. Um, I've worked with both of them. They're both quite similar. They're both uh, hands on, good coaches, good with the um, good with the sessions, but really good with the players as well. I I I find both of them quite approachable, knowledgeable, could learn off them. And um, a, a lot of the stuff is just giving people a belief at international level, really, and also having a relationship with them. 
which you can carry on further away from the the ten games or or the ten days that you meet up for games and, and things like that. It's it's kind of about a relationship with the with the players, getting them to believe in you, getting them to believe in uh, in what you want. And I say that them two kind of have that a little bit. They're obviously the other ones in the frame. We talk about uh, like Jim Magelton, knowing the the younger lads as well as as Robbo and, and Barra. Because you need to bring, you're going to have to bring players through, and uh, a bottom feed and bring the next generation into it. So that's a that's a big part of it as well. So for me, there's there, there's them too. But I mean, I would say they'll be inundated with uh, with candidates, all sorts of names, and I'll be involved. I'll be interested in it. And um, you, you mentioned young players there. What what are your thoughts on some of the younger guys coming into the squad now? Yeah, impressed with uh, some of the ones that I've seen up close. Um, Sexy, Gavin, um, people like that. Gil Brief. We think Gil Brief's came. He trained yeah, us a couple of times. He was decent. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a player that's going to gonna hopefully have a big future. Um, Josh can take him under his wing. Like no. <laughs> and I've learned from the best. Yeah, there's, there's good players there, Pete, but they... They, what they need is game time. They need to play games, um, not not particularly at international level, because that's that's one place that you have to learn on the job. Um, think back to the likes of the likes of Norwood, and, um, where his game came from and where he where he's got to by 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 playing international football. And I know he's I know he's left now, kind of prematurely and stuff in that light. But um, I think that really matured his game from. From where he was when he when he started, and there's a there's a platform there for um, for people to go and showcase themselves, and there's opportunities there as well. I think the the two sort of two managers that I think are the, the, the best fit. Um, they're not scared and giving boys chances as well. So it'll be interesting to see, um, and I hope I hope the young boys make the right decisions and go and go and fulfil their careers. Um, Gareth, I know you'll obviously miss being on the pitch but how much will you miss the banter with these lads have been around the squad long enough to know that the crack is amazing so how much are you going to miss that oh um, yeah it's, it's a big thing like I used to I used to have my bag never really emptied my bag from international duty I just left me stuff in it so I could just grab it and go the next the, the next trip <laughs> oh yeah but listen I um I, I do miss it like it's a it's a big it's a big thing um but like I mean Josh comes down Josh he comes and stays at my house and all that there, like so I get to see him see him regularly uh and he also he also washes your car as well I do yeah this no, is I, an absolute myth you I need to tell the truth about this story I tell you, you I need to you tell the truth tell about this story because it's a myth it's a myth he thought, he, he was that. cleaning his car and asked would I help but he ended up taking a picture of me while I was cleaning the car, and then told everyone that I just decided to clean his car. It's that idiot. You see, I, th- I heard, I heard that until you overtake him in terms of the amount of goals you score for Northern Ireland, every time you're at his house, you have to clean the car. That's We're it. on the same amount, nine. No, 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 no. That one didn't count. Washington got that one. No, it didn't. Nine <laughs> each. Nine each. Did they uh, get on this year one? So the last time, last time he's down, last time he's down, right? Come down on Saturday night. We uh we had a few beers and stuff and that. Uh, got up on the Sunday and the down the kids and all and that they're all messing about and stuff and um he's staying up he stays up above the garage in the in the room above the garage. <laughs> right? So we're we're all down in the kitchen and he and he uh and he goes off getting ready going to get a shower and stuff to uh to go up for some lunch at the pub and that right. So there are these things in the house you know you know when you see a big red button. Hold, yeah. Pete, Pete, hold Pete, on, before uh, you continue on any further, Pete, <laughs> listen to me, listen, listen, Pete, if you're a normal average family, right, you don't have these buttons or these precautions in your house, right, you only have these things in place when you've made it to a certain stage and a certain status, that you need these for crazy people out in the streets, right, so continue. Right, so uh, we're all down in the kitchen and that there, Josh goes up for a shower, and uh, the next thing, I was just saying, yeah, the, these buttons, right? So you see a big red button, right? And it says, do not touch the button. What do you do? <laughs> touch well, the you button. don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> touches it. He touches, touches the button, yeah. So he presses the button, 
the alarms go off, everything, the police are coming to the house, all racing. <laughs> They're on the phone, you're trying to, get the, trying to get the alarms off and that they're, that they're phoning up and going, oh, no, no, false alarm, false alarm, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're, they're going mental down the phone at me because somebody's touched the button and stuff. You all right? You all right? On for a shower well, and he's phoned the police to the, the house and that set the whole place off. It was... I thought it was for off. the lights, Pete, but I was like, down, what is this? He's down the stairs. I think that was me. <laughs> 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 well, because, Pete, I, I don't know about you, but... In my household, I don't have a panic button. I just have a panic yeah, inside yeah. the bed. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't have that luxury. So when I seen it, I was like, it says, do not push. And I was like, does it say, do not push because does it work the fans? Does it work the, the shutters? Does it whatever? And then you press it. There's like bloody Alcatraz, mate. There was people abseiling down the side of the house. Like, what is going on? No. Come a long way from Lauren. Come a long way from Lauren. You talk, well, I talked about your goal scores, you, uh, how many goals you both scored, right, for Northern Ireland. Yeah. You go back to the San Marino game, right? You're on two. Oh. Penalty, op- penalty opportunity. I could, when, when the penalty, because. Oh, I was see, watching TV, I wasn't there. He was watching TV, so he wasn't there. But when he went down for the penalty, I was like, right, we've won the penalty. I said, me and, I know Dave was on penalty, so I was like, we're quite close. I said, Surely he's not going to not let me score a hat trick. He'll have the chance to score a hat trick. So I went up with him and I was like, Devo, like, can you, like, I'm, let me hit it. I'm going to score a hat trick. And he went, no. So I thought he was bantering. And he was like, you know, and I was like, I wise up, Devo, just let me have it. He said, no, I'm on penalties. And he just, and he just kept looking at me. And I was like, are you being serious? And he was like, yeah. He said, I'm on penalties. So well, after the game. Repeat as well. Phone me straight away. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. I said, can't believe it. I said, I said, am I? Am I? <laughs> Out of the ordinary, thinking that I should have had a hat trick here from a country, he's like, no, and then um, that was it. But when it happened, Pete, I was like, I said, I'm going to score a hat trick here for Northern Ireland, and no one can take us away from me. And he was just like, no, <laughs> he's like, no, you're not having it, I'm not having it. And then he says, now looking back, he said, you know what? It's probably a bit harsh. It's probably a bit harsh. I so scored I like, a bit, I scored a bit that. harsh. I said it was more than a bit, mate. It's bloody off the charts. That's, it's, a, it's a nice feeling to score in that wee stadium, though. <laughs> that we won, I know. It was a horrible, <laughs> horrible game. San Marino, beautiful place. But yeah, Pete, he, he knows his card's been marked, so um, he knows he owes me big stuff. Right, I want to go do your hometowns. What's the thing you love most about Lauren and Banger? <sighs> Seaside, man. You cannot beat that marina down beside Picky. <laughs> on a summer day. Or a fish and chip shop from Donnie's. You cannot beat it. Oh, that's why I miss I miss the sea as well. I live right in the middle of the country. It takes me about three hours to get to the sea on a yeah. on a nice drive. Um, I think I just miss home, miss miss my friend, miss friends, miss family, things like that. Uh, quite a lot. Would I move back at the minute? No. Will I move back in the future? Possibly. Honestly, yeah, have, you seen what, have you seen what the COVID's done to the old uh, stocks and shares, mate? I've got no money left. I'm going to have to. Keep <laughs> <one>. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. If I even if I had half the amount of money you have right now, I'd be over the moon. I'd be doing <laughs> naked laps around the street. You don't give me that. <laughs> you, you know, right. you, you know the truth why he, why he hangs about with me in that there. So he calls himself my son in that there, right? He what calls himself. I am dangling that. Is trying to get under the well. Get me up. Uh, get that ink. Not dry. shy about it as well. He keeps saying about it. I want on your will. I want on your will. <laughs> Nothing there. <laughs> Nothing I'm there. not asking much. It's just ten percent. They'll, they'll keep me yeah. going for two generations. Josh, he spent the money on the red buttons, mate. Mad man, isn't he? Who presses the red Absolutely. buttons? Absolutely. You see, no. <laughs> Listen, Pete, you'll never see anything like again. And do you know what? See, see, for him telling that story, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Next time I'm down there, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm going to have them out to the house as well. Right, during, during lockdown, what have you been watching? Box sets. What's your go-to? G, listen, G is a weirdo. Doesn't have, doesn't have Apple Music. Doesn't have any playing apps on his phone. <laughs> doesn't play the computer. Doesn't listen to music. Doesn't watch TV, Pete. Nothing. You go into his room. For 10 years, I played with him for Northern Ireland. And every, it was a, cr- if you went into his bedroom, right? First, he was rooming with Brunty. You were with Brunty, him and Brunty room together. And then he went on his own. He wouldn't come with me because he said I was a weirdo. Broke my heart. It, it was a, it's a crime. If you took the remote and turned the TV on, it's a crime. You're not allowed to watch TV. Doesn't do it, mate. He's, it's, he might as well live in the 50s. So what are you, what are you reading then, Gareth? 
during lockdown? At the minute, I'm reading stuff about watches. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Educating myself. I've got, like, I've got this thing. I've got this thing about vintage watches at the minute. So I've been, uh, been reading about that. But I have been watching. Uh, I'm, I've, I watched The Sopranos years ago. So me and the missus have been watching that. So watching, you watched The Sopranos back in 1993, mate. I watched it when it was live, mate. I was old enough. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Josh? So I, I was on Amazon. Watched the thing called This Is Us. Tearjerker, wonder, wonder, wonder thing about three kids and their mum and dad. Then I watched a thing also on there called New Amsterdam. Uh, it's about sort of like a modern day version of ER, pretty decent. On Netflix, I watched The Tiger Man, The Lion, Tiger Lion, what's his? Tiger King. Oh, geez, yeah, I watched that. Blimey, goodness gracious me. Um, and then I would rewatch Entourage. Oh, my favorite show of all time. Oh, mate, unbelievable. Show. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm, I'm, back, I'm back watching that again. I'm in season two, yeah. episode five. Do you, know, do you know Ari Gold? Yeah. That's what he's like when he's working. <laughs> <laughs> that is what he's like when he's working. Excellent. Chance, you know what? I've really enjoyed this. I could speak to you guys for another hour all day long. We'll do oh, the lit. We'll do the whole function room, won't we, at some point? And you've just put oh, 100%, in there. yeah. No, no phones, yeah. and then we'll get all the stories, no, right? No phones, no microphones. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, listen, really good to see you both. Stay safe, stay well. Love you all your family. Yes. And, uh, we'll catch you on the other mm-hmm. side. Love you, lad. I'll see you in Bangor when I'm done. See you, Pete. All the best. Good luck. All right, see you. See you soon, our kid. So that's it for staying in this week. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll be back with more very, very soon. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the Northern Ireland YouTube channel. And of course, keep your eyes paid to Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.